Hello, you're watching Of New X, and today let's talk about the recently finished period drama, 鲜为镜像的大明 Under the Microscope. This is a 14 episodes short period drama that has just finished airing on the web platform iQIYI. It is directed by Pan Anzi, written by Ma Boyong, Zhou Rongyang. Ma Boyong also being the original author. The book is called 鲜为镜像的大明 and it's made up with six. Different cases that are all scoured and researched by the author and dug out from historical record of different counties back in Ming Dynasty. This author is very well known in China as many of his history-based novels have been adapted to screen, including Luoyang, Chang'an, Longxi. But 鲜为镜像的大明 is less of a fictional story, more of Real historical research, and this drama under the microscope is one of those many stories focusing on one tax case that did take place during late Ming Dynasty. The drama is led by Zhang Ruoyun, Wang Yang, Qi Wei, also including older and veteran actors such as Wu Gang. Gao Yaling. It was shot from September to November back in 2021. I have finished watching all 14 episodes, and I'll give it a. Two gold mine rating at the end. As usual, I'll briefly introduce you to the story and talk about what I think this drama has done very well and what it could improve on. The subtitle of this drama is "Si Juan An," which is the title of the particular case featured in this story. Set in late Ming Dynasty, our main character, played by Zhang Ruoyun, is a poor orphan living in a southern town in China. He's known in this town as the Mathematician, genius fool, who cannot really do anything apart from math. In our current society, he probably will be diagnosed as an autistic person. He has great talent in one thing, but then has great difficulties relating to other people. His parents died when he was very young in a big fire. Because of some coincidence, he ended up finding out that this county he lives in has been paying a tax for over a hundred years that really they shouldn't be paying alone. It should be divided. Among eight counties together, that belongs to the same division. But for some reason, their county is paying that, and adding a hundred years overpaid tax together is a pretty scary number. As a mathematician and a fool who really doesn't understand all the intricacies of human relationship, he insisted that this needs to be corrected. It is also tied into. The past history of his family, the death of his parents, and a kind of lost memories of his childhood that he is trying to find out. It started a wave and ripple after ripple, affecting not only his own county but his neighboring counties, upper-level government, even to the central government's new policy, and the whole thing ended up being a huge snowball situation. So, on the positive end of this drama, what are great things that's worth watching? Number one, very high quality of production of a period drama. IT has been doing short dramas for. A while, and all of them tend to have a really solid production quality to back it up. This is no exception. This drama also has a very consistent, coherent style, and many beautiful sceneries and great framing featured provides you extra values of watching. A beautiful period setting drama. The second thing, casting acting is very, 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 very good. Number one, everybody uses their own voice, original voice, and they're all very good at line delivery. And because this drama involves a lot of court proceeding, a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of very highly educated people talking in very eloquent way, and talk about actually quite complicated things, and it's a joy. For people who love great acting through lines to watch this drama, that part of pleasure probably is more specific, targeted to the domestic audiences of China. But I believe even if you don't understand by ear Chinese, the emotion that comes through their utterance of their words is very easy to detect. A couple of things I really enjoyed. Number one, Zhang Ruoyun being the lead, he really did a good job playing this autistic math. 
genius of a Ming Dynasty setting. Based on his previous works, I already have a very high expectation of his performance, and he uh, pretty much met exactly <laughs> my expectation. And I'd say there are a couple of very emotionally intense scenes that he really, really did very well. As the main lead of the story, definitely held the story together. I also enjoy Wang Yang's performance a lot in this drama. He plays a lawyer who has to earn his living by his clever words, his intelligence, his quick wit. Because of that, there's a level of performance that's involved in his even daily actions and words. So he does have a little bit more theatricality in everything he does in this drama than other dramas. But it's actually done for very good reason and for his particular role. And I enjoyed his couple of also highlight scenes that are so great. And his line delivery is also impeccable. Then you have a group of older actors who are so well established. Middle-aged men, when they sit down and do proper drama acting of the Guan Chang story of the ancient officials, the bureaucracy, the politics, the everything is said behind the line and you have to read what is unsaid. This drama will really crank it up okay, to maximum. And every guy is just so good at timing and pacing their performance, delivering you exactly what you want in those kind of exchange of clever words. The third thing I really appreciate about this drama is, apart from the fact that this is just a one line, one direction story that makes it a very easy watching experience. You only have like one thing you need to care about and it's short, it's very compact. You spend a day and you watch it, it's done. But the other great thing is, in the process, you see a very jie gu feng jing drama, which means borrowing the ancient, but actually is satirically commenting on what's going on in the world now. And it's actually very applicable, not just to China, it's a very universal thing. It shows the contrast, the struggle, and the war between the angel and the devil in everyone's heart in our human nature. The selfless, the pure-hearted intentions of as simple as writing a mathematical wrong versus the selfishness, the although I know you're right, but for my own benefit, I will never stand on your side type of thing going on and how everyone is out for their own good and that causes all kinds of conflict and injustice in the world. You see that get very well represented and reflected in the story in very funny, comical, ironical way. It would also touch on a lot of things that has its contemporary version playing out all the time, such as how the rich using their resources and connections and their conveniences keep hoarding more wealth and making the poor people suffer even more. They pay as little tax as you can imagine and then all the heavy burden lands on the poor commoners. Isn't that familiar? It's going on everywhere. Like if you live in North America these days, you know, those big companies you know, don't pay tax and then you and me, <laughs> working class of people, have to actually shoulder all the taxes in the world. Well, you see the extreme version of that, which is actually true during late Ming Dynasty in China, playing out in this drama and get really well represented to its detail. And it's very satirical, like the way it's written and getting picked apart. Although it has a version of justice that will get served because, you know, it's a drama. You want the main character to succeed. But it's not done in the over-the-top idealistic way that it gets something solved, but then you still see this whole world is full of that kind of problem. At the late Ming Dynasty, it became a really rampant problem. One of the essential reasons that the whole dynasty collapsed and got replaced by the next one. So this drama has very enjoyable plot, very watchable, short, even though it is a set in China, ancient time, late 16th, early 17th century time story, it still has a lot of relevance to our contemporary life. Hmm, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Pretty much it just tells you that human nature never really changes, no matter where it is and when it is. The one last thing I want to add I really appreciate about this drama is it has such a cute cat. And I love how this drama deals with the pet of the main character. They don't forget about it. A lot of dramas will give a cute pet to the main characters and forget about them later. I am so happy the cat gets such a fair representation on screen and it's so adorable and it's actually very well used as a storytelling device as well. Now let's talk about what is not so perfect about this drama, in my opinion. Okay, First is as a drama after I've watched 14 episodes, I haven't yet grown to 
love any of those characters significantly enough to the point that I remember them a long time after I think I'll very soon forget most of them and I definitely wouldn't be thinking about them let's say next year now I don't think this is the drama's intention to have it fully driven on your love and care of one main character it really is presenting the world in many different facades and showing you the particular thing that's going on and how it reflects the good and bad of human nature. The other thing I didn't like about this drama is on one hand I highly appreciate there are some very extensive research they managed to do for the late Ming Dynasty costume which is what I have but then it's like they stop at like 90% and just does not want to do the full thing correct. During Ming Dynasty the men all wear this net on their hair to keep the hair tidy. You also see that in Korean dramas during the Li Dynasty because the Ming Dynasty Emperor Zhu Yuanzhang is a person who advocates using that net and because of his insistence it becomes something that everybody all the men in Ming Dynasty China have to do. Whether you are from the lower class of being a farmer or the higher class you all wear this net. It's a very peculiar Ming Dynasty thing. In this drama you'll see it getting represented very extensively which is cool but one thing they did wrong is they should have all the men, all the adult men wearing it, not just high class. Even if you're a servant you'd be wearing it or a farmer working in the farmland but you don't see that in this drama. You just see the higher class scholars do that. The next thing they did wrong is often you have the guys only wearing the net but not anything, a hairpin and no hat which is very wrong. Unless you are in private space like in your bedroom at night you know chilling drinking wine you know yourself that's fine as long as you're present with other people. If you don't wear a hat you don't respect the other person and it's almost equal to your running naked. And in this drama you see all those guys walking on the street broad daylight all those officials they don't wear a hat they just wear the net which is unbelievable unthinkable back in Ming Dynasty. They even would not be wearing a hat during a banquet which is like no no that's not possible. Even in late Ming Dynasty when technically speaking a lot of rules start to loosen it's unthinkable for a guy to not wear a hat. It's not so hard to research that and it's like a common sense thing but somehow they just didn't do it. Also the women's costume is so not researched. I don't know like they spent all the money and time on the guys and just didn't bother and since they only have Qi Wei and that girl as the main female roles let's just save money and don't do anything. <laughs> maybe maybe it's the budget. Their costume has nothing to do with Min Dynasty, late Min Dynasty. Where does it come from? It doesn't look like Song doesn't look like Tang, it doesn't look like any specific time that you can think of. And the guys have very well researched Ming costumes and the, the women, did you just time travel from like what, novel land? That honestly just makes the handful enthusiast in me not that happy. I would understand if other people don't care but unfortunately I do. The other thing I would remind my audience is, I wouldn't say necessarily it's a negative thing, um, it's just that this drama, the couple of episodes at the beginning and the last three episodes at the end are very good and exciting. The middle chunk, although it's very short, will be slower and not so exciting. So in my opinion if you want to enjoy this drama and not missing the last three episodes of court proceeding that is just wave after wave and peak after peak. Watch this in one go. Don't stop. Like don't watch one episode and stop for the next day you're gonna forget about it and you maybe just like lose the steam and don't want to go through it. Since it's so short watch it in one go. Binge it like seven eight hours and it's done. I don't think you'll be disappointed at the end because it does deliver some very epic emotionally highly charged and then releasing satisfying dramatic moment towards the later part and all the build up in the earlier parts will serve that till the end so watch it in one go. <laughs> highly suggested. That should conclude my final review on the drama Under Microscope Xian Wei Jingxia de Da Miu. This drama is unlikely to have itself a following season because the story is concluded and also in the book it's just one of the multiple cases it got featured. Whether ITE is gonna make further dramas that are also taken from this book of other individual cases, we don't know yet. They haven't said anything. Totally depends on whether they think it's a worthwhile investment. I hope this video is useful for you to decide whether you should venture into the microscopic staring at Min Dynasty drama. Thank you for watching. I'm New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.